Hi, J4. I'm Chris Avalon. I'm creative director of Ascendant Entertainment. I'm also a senior designer on Fallout New Vegas. So Fallout New Vegas is the next installment in the Fallout franchise. Uh, it takes the player out west uh, to the, the Mojave Wasteland around Las Vegas. Uh, the player takes on the role of a courier uh, signed to deliver a package to New Vegas, but along the way you get kidnapped by raiders and you take two bullets in the head and then you spent the beginning of the game recovering and then trying to figure out who shot you, why, and make sure they don't do it again. We introduced uh, traits uh, back into Fallout uh, with New Vegas. Uh, they were present in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Uh, traits are um, they're similar to perks, but they also have a drawback associated with them. Uh, specifically, uh, the Wild Wasteland perk, if you choose that, you'll actually have special encounters in the Wasteland that no other character will have. Um, sometimes those encounters will be bad, and sometimes those encounters will be good. And it sort of like makes your character a weirdness magnet. Fallout New Vegas uh, has a hardcore mode associated with it. Uh, about 25% of the developers in the office are playing it right now. And the first time we tried it out, uh, one of the developers died within 60 seconds of hardcore mode. Some of the elements of hardcore mode that we've introduced are uh, ammo has weight. So uh, you know in Fallout 3 you could carry as much ammo as you wanted. Uh, in New Vegas, uh, every ammo piece that you pick up uh, will add weight and encumbrance to your character. Um, also, uh, stem packs, uh, they don't heal instantly like they did in Fallout 3 in hardcore mode. They actually take time to heal. So if you're in combat with a creature, you can't just pop up in your pit boy instantly heal and then you're back to ready to fighting condition. You've got that panic moment where you're like, I've got to survive for a few more seconds until this healing actually take, you know, kicks in. There's uh, a few uh, skill boost uh, items that are present in New Vegas. Uh, we have all the skill books that are present in Fallout 3. We just don't have as many of them. Uh, what we have complementing them are our skill magazines. What they'll do is they'll give you a temporary boost, boost for a limited period of time. Because when you pop up in a magazine, it's kind of like a little refresher course on the, on the skill. Um, there's a perk you can take, I believe it's uh, called Retention, uh, which will actually increase the duration of, uh, of that skill magazine boost. Traits in New Vegas are, are sort of a way to sort of personalize your character more. As much as perks always give you an advantage, traits give you an advantage, but a drawback associated with that. So you're like, you know what, if I do want to be a social character and I do want to have all as many speech options and barter options, I'm going to choose good natured at the cost of all of, of like the degradation of my weapon skills. Like I won't be as good with guns or melee weapons or whatever. But for things like speech and barter, for a character that I want to play like that, good nature is a good trait to take, for example. I think the difficulty in New Vegas depends on just wh whether, you, what, you know, wh whether you choose hardcore mode or not. I do think there are a lot more options that you can choose in just normal mode and hardcore mode. Like we've had a lot more stuff for the, for the real-time shooting experience. Uh, there's a lot more stat adjustment uh, with all of the workbench uh, crafting recipes you can get. There's a lot more stuff there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily more complicated. There's just more things for the player to do. If you've played Fallout 3 uh, and you play New Vegas, uh, you are going to experience about a you know, comparable amount of, of gameplay hours that you can put into it. Uh, one element that we do have in New Vegas is because of all the faction allegiances you have, uh, there are different branches you can take down the critical path of the storyline. There isn't like one core spine critical path you follow through. So not only can you play the game once like you could in Fallout 3, but you can go back and replay it and choose different faction allegiances and see how that plays out. So for, for the replayability, that adds even more hours to it. New Vegas has the same karma system that was present in Fallout 3. Uh, what players are going to notice, however, is the reputation system that's present in the game actually has a much bigger effect than karma does in the game. People don't react to you necessarily just being good or evil. They're actually more uh, reacting to whether you've been good or evil with regards to where their factions, what, what their faction standing is in the environment. So like if you, if you, you, know, you kill a lot of their soldiers, they'll perceive you as bad, while another faction or power group um, that, that may cause a good reputation with them. So it's a lot more depending on their perspective versus your actual inner soul, good or evil. There's two things that I, I guess I, I'd like to call about New Vegas. Uh, we have a lot of focus on the actual uh, secondary locations that you explore in the environment. There's a lot of love and detail that went into those locations, which a lot of the developers are experiencing now while they're playing through the game. Uh, so please feel free to explore. Uh, check out areas that don't seem like critical path, because you're going to find a lot of cool stuff out there, just like you did in Fallout 3. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, one of the things I really like about how the New Vegas storyline is set up 
is that there's no one big bad guy present in the game. Depending on how your character feels about the faction politics, or whether your character disagrees with the faction politics entirely and believes in carving his own path, you actually determine who your bad guy is and how you want to resolve that situation. So as much as the world is sort of open world exploration, the storyline lends itself to that as well, and I think that's one of the strengths of the title. The narrative in New Vegas, we try to make sure we incorporate the actual game mechanics uh, into the storyline. So the reputations you get with various factions in the game, that actually has an impact on how the storyline plays out and you know what areas are available, what quest lines are available. Uh, it's kind of one of our big principles at Obsidian that we want to make sure the story is not divorced from the actual gameplay or game systems. So the reputation mechanic is a way of saying, you know what, depending on how you, how you, how you make a choice with the story over here, you can see the repercussions over here and then play around with that mechanic to see how the story storyline changes, and we think that's going to be a lot of fun for the player. So Fallout New Vegas is due for release on October 19th uh, for Xbox, PS3, and PC. War never changes. <laughs>